Hey, quick, quick study. Um, I'm thinking about two certain terms. Uh, and there's something that's been impressing upon me um, probably for about a week now. And I've, I've kind of put off talking about it just uh, until this morning when two different things came to mind. Um, this is an exhortation. Now, a lot of us are on YouTube and, um, you know, there's an endless stream of, of refreshment, but there's also different streams of heresy, false doctrine. There's all kinds of stuff out there. There's the endless nonsense and charades of, of date setting or just hysteria surrounding either the rapture or prophetic utterances and dreams and there's an obsession we are let the gospel be your discernment first of all and when you see that something is wrong turn away from it it's i'm not talking about i'm talking about teaching this is so much more dangerous you know it it would be better to go and uh it'd be better for a lot of people to go and do something fun or something that might seem even something that might seem uh, worldly, like watch a movie. It would be better for you to watch a movie and just zone out rather than to engage your mind with the pollution that's in religious things. There's a seduction and there's a danger to all things religion. You, you can't sit on the fence and say, well, it's kind of right. I know they say this one thing about, you know, repent of your sins and, you know, but most of the other stuff was okay. Or, you know, they were okay on this. And then, you know, they began to say you should fear the judgment of the Lord. You know, they seem to have the gospel, right? And then they say you should fear God's judgment and you better uh, do everything you can to serve him. You can't. You can't. You've got to stick to grace. You've got to stand fast in the liberty. And it's as easy as just shutting it off. Shutting it out. Don't go to those self-made cisterns of polluted water. There's only one stream of grace, and that's, that's Jesus Christ. And if it's not Jesus Christ, it's not worth you exposing yourself to it. Because there's two things that have come to my mind. Um, when, when Paul writes that, you know, their word is a canker and gangrene. And I'm going to get to that one in a second. The other one that came to my mind was this root of bitterness, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. The issue is that you're not holding to grace. You're not standing in liberty. You need to be diligent. If it fails the test of grace, that means, does does this tell me how God has, I have peace with God, how I've been reconciled to God, how I have access to God, how I have an imperishable inheritance? That's important. Imperishable. In Jesus Christ. Does this tell me about who he is and what I've been given? All things have been given to me. Is this speaking that to me or is this putting me into condemnation and fear? If any man fail the grace of God, we have to test all things. We have to test everything. Does it fail the grace of God? Particularly with teaching. We care for other people and whether or not they seem to miss out, miss the concept of the grace of God. But if it's teaching, you've got to shut it out. Many be defiled. So he says, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you. You know, there's something with when grace, when people rail against the grace of God, 
there's a root of bitterness. When they fail the test of grace, when they fail to discern grace, and they go after something else with an itching ear, looking to make a gain, looking to make their own way, looking for a reward, not grace. Grace is a gift. When they look for their own reward, when they look for something that they can merit before God, the root of bitterness will spring up. To trouble people and thereby many be defiled. So I looked up the word for defiled. I looked up the word for uh, trouble also, but this is the only place where this word trouble is, is used. So I looked at the word defiled. And you can see it in Jude 1 8. And this is where he's specifically talking about dreamers. Likewise, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion. There you see the bitterness. So you need to be very careful. If if there's a dream somebody has and it's not pointing to grace, there is a root of bitterness. There is an ambition. There is a they're they're looking to make a gain of you. They're looking to take advantage. And maybe they don't know. But this is because this root of bitterness has set people up. And it's a seduction. You know, in the last days, there's people will be deceived and they will deceive. So don't judge by sincerity or what you think someone's intention is or what they tell you their intention is. Does it fail the grace of God? Is are we sticking to the gospel? Is God am I am I judging the am I discerning the word and how I'm understanding it based on what God has done in Jesus Christ by shedding his blood for me, showing me that he loves me and giving it to me free and calling me a son based on just faith. Does what they're saying match up with who God is and who God has revealed himself expressly in what he did? Does this show me the cross that, you know, no matter that, despite how I am not good, God was good to me as a gift. And I'm not looking to be good now. I'm just looking at the gift and God's character. And understanding this is how he wants me to relate to him on every single matter. In Christ, as a child and an heir. Titus 1.15 says, Unto the pure all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. You'll notice that these people who become bitter, become defiled, because they're failing the grace of God, that's the only reason. That's the reason. is because they're not looking at the grace of God. They've forgotten that they've been cleansed from their former sins. They've, they, they've lost sight of the cross. They've put the cross to a check mark in their, in their box, and now they're moving on to do what they need to do. You need to mark them and avoid them. You need to shut it out. Your morbid curiosity for what's going on and who's saying what, you've got to, you've got to let it go. You've got to let it go. It's not just to know. It's gangrene. It's a canker. So let's see that one. Two Timothy two. Oops. Beginning this chapter, you therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. You know the thing about grace is it allows me to be weak. You know. Jesus said to Paul, my strength is made perfect in weakness. So being strong in the grace is recognizing I have nothing to bring here. 
I'm clinging to just you. You're doing it all. And actually, my clinging to this, this grace in weakness is just resting. It's just taking the word and, and believing it. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you've heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit to faithful men who should be able to teach others also. Therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip down so I can get to what I'm going to. And then maybe I can look at some of the Greek in, in this. Um, but I haven't looked at it yet. So of these things... Put them in remembrance, charging before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit. Listen, if you're not, if we're not talking about gaining Christ, if we're not talking about what, what is, what is profitable? What is profitable? The word of life. The, the gospel is the free gift. You have to, everything has to be discerned within the gospel. This grace, it's God's economy to the church. An economy of grace, a dispensing of grace. And it's by the word that we would be built up in Christ. It's all about Jesus. It's not about what I'm doing. It's not about me making making, making my own way. It's about him being everything for me. So words that have no profit that subvert the hearers are these profane and vain babblings for they will increase unto more ungodliness and their word does eat as a canker of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus who concerning the truth have erred saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some Our faith is in this good news which describes everything for us. And that everything is a gift. Just the same way it started, that's how it continues. This work of grace, he will continue it until the day of Jesus Christ. Shun. Let's look at this one. Peristomai. Peristomai. G4026. We see the first use in, in John 11. And I knew that you hears me, you hear me also, but because of the people which refused, that's that's what the word is, that's the people which stand by, I said it that they may believe that you have sent me. Jesus spoke so that those who were refusing would see the Father answers. He hears the Son. But we're going to look at uh, Titus 3.9. It says the same thing. But avoid foolish questions and genealogy, genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law. For they are unprofitable and vain. A man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition reject. There's some people out there on YouTube that we don't even we don't even need to uh, check up on them. You don't need to. You don't need to check up on them and see if they've changed their mind. Reject. The clear word is reject. Those who are causing contention and striving about the law. Reject. It's profane and useless babbling. It's words to no profit. And it damages. It becomes a canker. And it becomes a root of bitterness, which defiles many. You know, there's so many people concerned about this person's character. And what did they do and see? And what did they do? And, you know, their Im imagination is so defiled with all these ideas of what's the real motive and what did, what are they hiding? If we stop, if we just stop 
and look at the grace of God, if we're, if we're understanding, discerning grace, if we're not failing grace, these things don't even need to come up. Because under the pure, all things are pure. Now, it doesn't mean that we just <laughs> we just say, yeah, go for anything. We know there's obviously, when we just take people who are living in open uh, fornication uh, and they're unwilling to change their mind, like the man in Corinth sleeping with his father's wife, you can see Paul said, cast him out of your midst. Cast him out. Kick him out. And he would be delivered over. And you know what? God did a work in that guy. And he was restored. That's the only way to deal with people failing the grace of God. And I do believe that the guy who was caught in this kind of sin that's not even found among the unbelievers it's just so it's just so wrong i believe that there is an issue with his understanding of grace there's an issue with his understanding of grace because grace doesn't produce that the grace of god does not produce sin leading to death it just doesn't but you know what will profane babblings being defiled a root of bitterness strivings about the law the strength of sin is the law that's first corinthians 15 The strength of sin is the law. Those who are still clearly going after the law, you need to reject them. And that doesn't just mean saying, oh yeah, they're bad. Let me see if they're still bad. And let, let's go check it out and see how terrible it is. No. It means don't even, don't even give them the second of your time. Don't even open that up. Don't even open that video up. For yourself. It's a canker. It's a gangrene. It spreads. That stuff is filthy. Put it away. Put it away from you. Okay. Now... Why does why does this work? It does work. When you put when you reject when you rebuke people sharply or, or or reject them, when you cut them off, why did it work with the guy in Corinthians? It's the destruction of the flesh. When the flesh goes after everything with greediness, let's say the person is is a believer, they're not a false believer they're not a false brethren crept in who who hates the grace of god and is looking to just to deceive let's say that they're a confused believer why does this work and it does i think the picture is something that i get both from hebrews a certain verbiage from hebrews and when you see the israelites in the desert and i've, I've talked about this before and kadesh barnea the, the Israelites, when they had gotten through the Red Sea, they were murmuring and complaining and they wanted to go back to Egypt. They had forgotten what God had done and they had said, he's going to let us die out here. It was, uh, it was their unbelief that was the issue. You know, God was patient with the sin. He actually was. But the unbelief was the issue. And that's where things got ugly. And God allowed serpents, fiery serpents, to come in and bite those who were in the camp. I got interrupted. I had to pause it. Um, but God allowed those who were in the camp to be bitten. 
by fiery serpents. And this was so that they could realize their, their need. They were to the point where they thought that God was only looking to do them harm. They had a false view of him. They were missing the salvation that they had already received when they had the Passover, which represents believing on the blood. And pass through the Red Sea, which is a picture of baptism, being immersed into Christ, being baptized into Christ. They're a picture for us so that we could see. But what they did was they they chose to harden their hearts in unbelief and believe that God was was going to lead them out to the desert to die. And I'm sure many of them said it's because of what you guys did with the golden cap and everything like that. And and God, he was looking at the unbelief. That was the issue. So fiery serpents came in and bit the people. And they began to see their need... They knew, we're dying. We're dying out here. So Moses brought the bronze serpent up to the top of the mountain and told the people that if anyone looks, just look, and they will be saved. They will not die. And that's the type of Christ. We know Jesus in John 3 says, that he is the bronze serpent that will be lifted up. He is. That is speaking of him. So in Hebrews 6, it says, For those who have tasted of the heavenly gift, once they fall away, it's impossible to renew them to repentance. Now, if you're cracking and you have a proper view of repentance, you understand that it is a change of mind. You go from being condemned and thinking you need to you need to fix things for God to trusting in Jesus Christ you've you've turned from your idea that God is demanding something from you and you've you've looked upon the savior you've seen Jesus Christ that is repentance that is the change of mind that is that's it. It's believing on Jesus Christ. As opposed to not believing and being in unbelief. Hebrews 6 says, for those who are... So we're talking about saved people here. Let's say that first. We're talking about saved people. When they fall away, it's impossible to renew them to repentance. So when they begin to load a bunch of works and load a bunch of things on there and they say, God will kill you because of your sin. Now, I understand there is there is a <laughs> when you fail the grace of God. You do go down a path of the destruction of the flesh and you can die. But when people are saying that God is angry at you. God is going to punish you. And they won't tell you about what God has already done for you and how everything is a free gift. When they go down this path and they're using the law to do it, you can't change their mind. You need to disengage. You've got to reject because God needs space to work. You need to cut off the fellowship. With those who are heretics, you have to cut it off. Because God needs space to work. How so? The destruction of the flesh. Fiery serpents. And if you, you, you need to understand that this is all those winds of doctrines that they have going on. They will, they will be consumed by it. These cankers and the gangrene and the root of bitterness, it's not pleasant. It's painful. 
God allows the enemy to destroy the flesh. That self-righteous identity will end up being consumed. You need to give it space to happen. And for your own sake, you need to avoid it at all costs. That is, it's so important right now because there's so much garbage. Protect yourself and give God the space to do what he's doing. Now, some, now YouTube's real freaky because you've got so many wolves out there and they all support each other. So they stay inflamed. But by the grace of God and God's mercy, some of them will be worn out. The flesh, the fle- the self-righteous flesh will go down in flames. They'll shipwreck themselves and they'll look up at the bronze serpent Jesus and they'll see their salvation. And they'll know that nothing that they did could ever save them or do anything for them. And it needs to happen. It needed to happen to me. Because I went crazy for Jesus. And I wouldn't listen to anybody. Nobody could change my mind. God had to do a work. And people had to be out of the way. And I had to be isolated and run myself aground. Get shipwrecked for a while. And then I saw it didn't have anything to do with me in the beginning. He's done it all. And he's still doing all of it. It's all the grace of God. God can renew them to repentance. With man, it's impossible. But God can do it. So just take heed to the warnings in the scripture. Take it seriously. Take it seriously. If you're still, if you're still missing this, and I mean, there's been so many videos about mark and avoid. If you're still not getting this, pay attention. Keep yourself undefiled from all this bitterness and the cankers and the endless talk and strivings and contentions. Stay out of it. Don't look for it. Keep yourself undefiled. To the pure, all things are pure. I can enjoy so much. There's so many things I can enjoy. Don't let yourself get that morbid curiosity of what drama is going on. YouTube's a cesspool for that. And there's some people who have made it their full-time job to do drama. Avoid it. Go after the good food. Go after the good food. And you know, it's not drama if we're talking about discernment. This video is not drama. I'm talking about discernment here. And there's plenty of videos that have been made where there needs to be, even Paul names Hymenaeus and Philetus. He's not causing drama. He's not causing a contention. Those guys are going after all kinds of strivings about the law. There's a distinction that needs to be made. Just, and this is where the root of bitterness comes in, is because when people think, well, who are you to say it? Hey, it's not about that. It's about grace. Are you still getting grace from this? Are you hearing what Jesus says? Are you still getting grace out of that? If it's failing the grace of God, protect yourself. Get away from it. Go for the good food. Tell me about what Jesus did and how he he actually, he doesn't just love me once. He loves me forever. He didn't just love me at the cross. that's, That's his statement of how he feels to give me everything in my Christian life. Free. So just be careful. Please take this seriously. All right.